all right everyone welcome back to another video and today what i have for everyone is my full review of the boom pods hush eq truly wireless bluetooth headphones so i've been using these headphones for quite a bit of time and i feel like i've gathered all my thoughts and opinions on them and that's what i'm going to share with everyone in this full review here today so hopefully by the end of this video you guys and gals know whether or not if these headphones are worth picking up all right but we're not going to waste any time here today let's jump right in trying to get this done as quick as possible so without further ado let's get started so starting off here the first thing i want to talk about with with everyone is the overall build quality and design of the headphones now build quality wise these are built almost exclusively out of plastic now don't get it twisted this might look like aluminum right here in the corner but that's plastic this might look like metal you know metal screws over there that's plastic okay this might also look like aluminum that's plastic okay this is built almost exclusively out of plastic Okay, just wanted to let y'all know that here. It's a combination of your grippy, texturized plastic here on the ear cups and on the band, and your slippery plastic around the hinge points, okay, and the screws. But this is primarily built out of plastic. So from a build quality standpoint, I have to say it's good. Why is it good? Why is it not really good? Why is it not top notch? That's because there's too much glossy plastic in major breakpoints on the headphones. And what do I mean by major breakpoints? Well, the swiveling point for the headphones, this is a major breakpoint, and that's plastic. Also, the folding point for the headphones, also that same point, plastic, because these do fold for extra portability. But that just adds another breakpoint so the overall durability goes down. That's why I say the overall build quality on these is just good. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more reinforced aluminum on the areas where the headphones might be more susceptible to breakage. But overall, the build quality on these is good in my opinion. And although it's grippery, grippy texturized plastic, y'all can see it's still very fingerprinty. I wiped down the headphones before I started the video and y'all will be able to see the smudges as the video goes on. Okay, I don't know if my lighting is going to do it justice. But it's still very fingerprinty, even though it's very grippy. But I'm okay with that. Even though it's very grippy, but I'm okay with that. So the build quality on these is good. Same thing goes for the overall design. Okay, The foldable, fully adjustable, swiveling design, it makes sense. It's good in my opinion. It's not really good it's not top notch why because having something that folds adds another break point having something that swivels adds another break point even though I see the reason why you did that you want it to be a little bit more adjustable for comfort and you want it to be a little bit more portable for portability sake so I understand why boom pods went with this style of headphones but I'm not a big fan of it that's why the overall design is just good in my opinion as well. And also, this is what really dropped it down to good. Micro USB here in 2021. Now, I don't know how old these headphones are. Maybe they're from 2017, 2018. There was still USB type C back then. Come on, Boom Pods, step it up. And to make matters worse, if you go on their product page, they advertise this as having USB type C, which it clearly does not. As you can see right there, that's micro USB. So that's what we call false advertising. Not a fan of that there. Not a fan at all. So that is one of the reasons why the design overall is just good. Not really good, not top notch. Okay? So build quality, good. Design, good. Let's move on. Let's talk about these core features now. Let's get into this. And in terms of headphone core features, these headphones are feature packed. Let's not waste any time. Core feature number one, 
These bad boys are packing the older Bluetooth 4.1 technology. So a little bit older, still works. Not mad at that. You have to cut corners somewhere to keep the price down. And they have a standard range of 10 meters or 33 feet. So the standard old school Bluetooth range is on board with these. And I have to say that range is pretty much on point. Okay? I can vouch for that. Now, also, they have built-in active noise cancellation into the earbuds. And I have to tell you, the noise cancellation on these is good. Now, there's no way to adjust it. You know, there's no way to turn it off and on. When it's on, when the headphones are on, it's on. When the headphones are off, it's off. Or when you plug in a wired connection, same thing. Okay? So they do have active noise cancellation built in. Really nice feature. I like the fact that that was included here, especially for the price that these headphones go for. And they have three built-in EQ modes. Now, BoomPods was saying that these modes are adjustable, but I couldn't figure out how to adjust them. And I downloaded all of BoomPods applications, couldn't figure out how to connect up the headphones. Thus, I couldn't figure out how to how to adjust the EQ even though Boom Pods is saying that the headphone EQ is adjustable, couldn't figure out how to do it. So it is what it is. But there are three different EQ modes on the headphones. You have a vocal boost, you have a bass boost, and then you have a Boom Pod Studio mode in terms of the EQ. So really happy to see the EQ on here, especially when we talk about the bass. Turning on that bass boost really brings the bass alive for these headphones. So that's a really solid core feature there. And one of my all-time favorite core features right there up next to being able to connect these headphones to two devices to use simultaneously. These headphones are using physical clicky buttons everywhere, okay? So you want to go next track, you want to go previous track, volume up and down, EQ button, physical clicky buttons everywhere. Really good stuff there. Boom pods, really good stuff indeed. So that is also another solid core feature that I really enjoyed seeing on these headphones. Okay, so EQ, built-in physical clicky buttons, and I already alluded to it, these headphones can connect up to two devices that can be used simultaneously with the one pair of headphones. I'm gonna show y'all how to do that a little bit later on in this video. One of my absolutely Favorite core features for headphones of all time. Very happy to see it on these headphones right here. Another solid, solid core feature. And of course, the other core features that I already talked about, these are fu fully adjustable and foldable, okay? But that is not really a good feature to have in my opinion, because as I said, that adds potential breakpoints for the headphones, okay? But those are features, so it is what it is. And these headphones do pack in 40 millimeter drivers for some really good sound quality, some really good overall clarity, and some pretty good overall bass. Now that bass goes to top notch if you turn on the bass boost mode. But in regular mode, without turning on the EQ settings, it's just pretty good bass. All right, we're going to expand on that a little bit later on. Okay? So that goes over all of the core features for these headphones. Let's keep it moving now. Let's go. Up next, let's might, we might as well dive into it. I already mentioned it. Let's talk about the overall sound quality, the volume, and the bass, 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 bass. That young bass. Let's get into it. Now, talking about the overall sound quality, and I already talked about this in my Fit and Sound demo, the overall sound quality on these is really good okay minimal to no distortion at low or high volumes on the spectrum here no nope. pretty much almost no distortion there was a little bit that my ears was able to pick up that's why it's just really good instead of top notch but in terms of the sound quality really good stuff there in terms of the volume and the noise cancellation it's really good as well it's not the best noise cancellation but for what it is, it's really good, and the volume on these is really, really good, okay? With these at max volume, I can only hear what I'm listening to. 
So really good volume overall. Now, let's talk about the bass. Now, without any of the EQ modes turned on or without the bass boost EQ mode turned on, the bass on these is just good. It's very crisp, it's very clear, it's noticeably there. But when you turn on the bass boost mode, these headphones really come alive. The bass gets punchier, it gets grittier, and you can really feel it. Don't believe me? Check out my Fit and, De Fit and Sound demo. I'll link it down below so y'all can see my live impressions. Okay? I was pleasantly surprised by these headphones. Alright? So, um, really good overall sound quality, really good overall volume, and really good to top-notch bass, depending on if you use the bass boost mode. So, good stuff there, good stuff there indeed. Now, Moving on, let's talk about the microphone quality. Now, there is microphones built into the headphones right there. And in terms of the microphone quality, I have to say it's just okay. Now, for uh, basic things like dictating text messages, dictating emails, it works. But it was very hit or miss. But for the more important things like taking phone calls, taking video calls, a lot of the callers told me I sounded very clear and very crisp, but the volume was low. Okay? There was no distortion, but they said the overall volume was low. And I, I took about, I want to say, 5 to 10 phone calls, and that was the same complaint that I was always getting. It sounds very crisp, it sounds very clear, but the volume during phone calls is low. So that that leads me to say that the microphones on these headphones are just okay. Okay? They get the job done for uh, texting and dictating emails, but they really fall a little short for phone calls in terms of the volume category. Okay? Now, there was no issues on my end. They sounded very crisp, very clear, very loud and sharp with no distortion. But on their end, they just said the volume was low. So overall, okay microphones on this one. That's an area where these headphones can definitely use a little bit of improvement. Now, I don't know if my microphone test does it any justice, but I'll link that up down below so y'all can check that out for yourself as well. Okay. We did really put these headphones through the gauntlet and run them through just about every test I can think of. All right? It is what it is. So, okay, microphones. Definitely a weak point for these headphones. Let's keep it moving. Nevertheless, let's go. Up next now, I just want to walk everyone through how you would pair up these device, bleh, pair up these headphones to one device and then two devices and use them simultaneously, okay? Then, we're gonna go ahead, I recorded another clip earlier, walking y'all through the headphone uh, earbud button controls, or the Bluetooth headphone button controls. Gonna click that in after the pairing steps. So let's jump into it right here. So the first thing we wanna do is turn on our headphones and put them into pairing mode, right? So to do this, you just press and hold on the multifunction power off on button here, and you're going to get some audible cues. It will let you know, hello, powered on, and it will say pairing mode. So you just want to press and hold until you hear that. Okay? Pairing. And then if you look real close, you can see the uh, power button has a red and blue LED flashing indicating that the headphones are now in pairing mode. It's kind of weak. That's another uh, downside of these headphones. The LED on here is very, very weak, but it is flashing red and blue right here. So the headphones are in pairing mode. Now you just want to take your device. We're using two pixels here today, using Android devices here today, and you just want to go in, turn on Bluetooth. As y'all can see, it's already on, on device number one. Go in to the sub settings by pressing and holding, and then you want to tap on pair a new device up at the top. Okay? Then you just want to wait for this to pop up. So you see where it says Hush EQ? Tap on that to begin the pairing process. 
tap pair to confirm, and it connects right up. All right, that's how you pair one device and it's ready to go. Now, if you wanna pair up two devices, all you have to do is disconnect device number one. It disconnects, you get that audible cue, it goes back into pairing mode, and then you just take device number two and you redo the same steps. So we're gonna unlock the device here, okay? Unlock the Pixel 1 here. We're going to swipe down. Oh, yeah, no gestures on this one. Turn on Bluetooth with a tap. Let it turn on. Press and hold to get into the sub settings. Boom. Tap on pair a new device up at the top. And again, tap on the Hush EQ to pair it up. And it connects up. Boom. There's also a uh, pairing confirmation dialog box that pops up and you're good. So now it's connected on device number two. And then all we have to do is turn back on Bluetooth on device number one. And it's going to reconnect. Okay. And you can see it's connected up on device number one now. So now you can use both your devices simultaneously with the headphones. So you can see if I pull up music on both of these, let's pull that music up on both of these here. So YouTube music on both of these. And we're going to pull up two different playlists here. So let me get my workout playlist on device number two. And we're going to get that going. Push play and pause that. And let me turn it down so we don't get any copyright. So turn it down over here and let's turn it down over here so we don't get any copyright as well. Turn it down over here. Not all the way down, just down enough so y'all can't hear it. So now I got two different playlists pulled up on two different devices, right? And you can see if I start playing on device number one, it's playing, I'm jamming out, no issues, no muss, no fuss, right? And let me turn that back down, okay? Don't want to get any copyright there. So it's playing on device number one, no problem. But if I want to switch and play something on device number two, just have to start playing here. Boom. Turns off device number one, starts playing on device number two. Just that easy, right? So you can see that was a simultaneous switch between devices. So now I'm listening to the music from device number two. And if I want to go back to the music on device number one, boom. Just have to tap play on device number one. Now it's playing that music on device number one. You see it pauses the music on device number two. Now, this also works for phone calls, voice commands, emails, so on and so forth. If I'm doing something on one device and I want to do something on another device, I just have to do it. Okay? It will simultaneously switch between my connect devices without any issues and pretty much no latency. The switch is almost instant. Okay? And the same thing goes for phone calls. So if I am watching a YouTube video or watching a Netflix movie or a Hulu show and I get a phone call over here, it's going to pause the show and tell me there's a phone call over here. I can answer the phone call. I can take it. And then when I'm done, hang up the phone call and keep playing my show over here on device number one and vice versa. So this to me, in my opinion, is a must have is a must have feature for bluetooth headphones all right the ability to connect up more than one device and use those devices simultaneously with the head, with the headphones that is a must have feature in my opinion and i'm very happy to see that boom pods incorporated that feature into this very um price friendly pair or budget friendly pair of bluetooth headphones all right, so real quick pairing steps. I showed y'all how to connect up one device. I showed y'all how to connect up two devices. I showed y'all how to switch between devices simultaneously. Real quick pairing steps. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk y'all through the uh, headphone Bluetooth button controls, and then we're gonna come back and continue on with the rest of this review. So I'm gonna cut that in right here. I hope y'all find it helpful, and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, everyone. Now, in this portion of the video, I'm just gonna walk everyone through the Bluetooth headphone 
button controls for the Boom Pods Hush EQ Truly Wireless headphones, right? And I gotta tell y'all, aside from missing one feature, these headphones are feature packed. And what is that one feature that they are missing? You can't call upon your voice assistant with any of the multifunction built-in buttons. But you can call upon your voice assistant using your vocal command, all right? But other than that, these headphones are feature packed and we're gonna go ahead and walk you through all of the features right now. So as y'all can see, got the headphones on, got some music pulled up, I got them connected to my Pixel 2 XL, we're good to go. Just wanted y'all to see that verification. Now let's jump in. Now, play and pause is really straightforward. You just press the power on multifunction button one time to play and another time to pause. It's real easy here. So y'all can see tap. Right there, music starts playing. Tap it again. Music pauses. Really straightforward. Really straightforward stuff here. All right? Now, if you want to do volume up, that one's really easy as well. Let me play the music. You just want to press and hold on the next track button for a couple seconds and you'll see the volume go up. So let's demonstrate. Press and hold on the volume up. Okay, you see that volume going up? Okay, good stuff, right? You want volume down? You press and hold on the previous track button and you'll see that volume going down, right? See it, press and hold, volume going down. All right, good stuff. Now, when you hit max volume, you'll hear a boom, all right? And when you hit, when you hit the minimum volume, you'll hear a boom, okay? So that's how you know when you reach the max and that's how you know when you reach no volume, all right? Now, if you wanna to go to the next track, you tap it once, you tap the next track button once, takes you to the next track, just like that. I love physical cookie buttons, man. Y'all see how easy I'm flying through this? So next track, tap it once, take you right to it, okay? One more time, next track, take you right to it, okay? So one tap on the next track button, take you to the next track. You want to go to the previous track or you want to restart the track, you do the same thing on the uh, previous track button. So one tap restarts and then another tap takes you to the previous track. Okay, let's do that again. So let it play for a little bit. One tap, restart, one tap again, previous track. One more time, let me show y'all how easy that is. Let it play for a little bit. Okay, one tap, restart, one tap again, previous track. It's just that easy, man. This is why I love, love, love physical clicky buttons. All right? Good stuff there. Good stuff indeed. Now, the last feature of the headphones is very simple. They have a built-in EQ button on the side of the headphones, and it has three modes. It has a BoomPod Studio mode, which is the setting that BoomPods think is perfect for the headphones. It has a vocal boost mode, and then it has a bass boost mode. All right, so if you tap it, you'll get that audio cue. So now it's on vocal boost. Tap it again. Now it's in BoomPod Studio mode. Tap it again. Now we're in that bass booster, bass boost mode, right? Okay, let's pause the music. And this, guys and gals, pretty much goes over all the features and headphone controls for the BoomPods Hush EQ Truly Wireless Bluetooth headphones. Now, as I said, the only feature that's missing from these is there is no uh, voice assistant built into any of the multifunction buttons on the headphones, but you can indeed still use your voice command. So I can say, okay, Google, what's the weather like in Palm Bay today? And then I'll get that audio feedback from the headphones. There will be isolated thunderstorms okay. with a high of 89 now, and a low of 76. Y'all gonna have to forgive me because the, the one reason seven. why I don't use my voice commands is because it triggers all my devices, as y'all just heard. All right, but you still have your voice assistant command, even though you don't have any built-in uh, voice assistant multifunction button here. Okay, so that is the only feature that's missing missing 
from the headphones here, okay? Other than that, y'all, um, we do have quite a variety of phone call controls. I'll go ahead and throw that up in post for y'all to check out. But you can see, you do have pretty much all of your basic phone call controls here. So pause the video, check that out. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature. And with these physical clicky buttons, you shouldn't have any issues. So, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this portion of the full review for the BoomPods Hush EQ Truly Wireless Bluetooth Headphones. Now I'm going to jump back into the rest of the review. I hope y'all found this portion helpful, and I will see you guys on the other side. For now, peace. All right, everyone, so welcome back. I hope y'all enjoyed those real quick Bluetooth headphone button controls. And now let's continue on with the rest of the review for the BoomPods Hush EQ headphones. Let's go. Now, moving on, let's now talk about the overall Bluetooth range and the overall Bluetooth strength. Now, again, as I talked about in the core features category, these bad boys have Bluetooth 4.1 on board with a standard range of 10 meters or 33 feet. And I got to tell y'all, in terms of the Bluetooth range and strength, it was pretty much top notch. And even better still, if I if I were if I was in dang I can't talk today I'm sorry y'all if I was in areas where you know the Bluetooth reception was bad we have a dedicated aux jack so I could wire these up and rock out so so even though the Bluetooth range and strength was top notch I do really like the addition of the aux jack for situations when I'm in you know, less than ideal environments, or if the headphones die, you can use the aux jack without needing additional power. So really good stuff there, really good stuff indeed. And I really do like the fact that they included a gold-plated aux jack so you get the best actual sound quality when you do want to plug in. All right, so good stuff there, good stuff there indeed. Good overall, top-notch, my bad, Overall Bluetooth range and strength and really good addition of the aux jack on board with the headphones. All right, so let's keep it moving now. Up next, let's talk about overall durability for the headphones, right? Now, in terms of durability, I have been really good with these, okay? I haven't dropped them. I did take them on a few workouts, so they did bang up on some equipment. So you can see some of the stitching is a little ruffled here, not torn, but it, it's definitely been through the ringer, okay? But it still looks really good. I can clean this up with some wet wipes and it will be looking brand new. Get rid of the fingerprints and it will still be looking brand new. So the overall durability on these, I would have to say is good. Now, I say good because I have fallen asleep with these headphones on a couple of times and, you know... Although they have survived, I don't know how long they will keep surviving. And if y'all know me, when I test out headphones, that's one of the tests. Because I do fall asleep listening to audiobooks. It kind of helps me sleep. It's very soothing. Even though I don't sleep long, I feel like those audiobooks are very soothing and they really help me go to sleep. So I do fall asleep listening to audiobooks, whether it be self-help or zombie books, or sci-fi fiction books, or, uh, you know, shout out to Rob from Comics Explain. Bro has a very soothing voice, okay? And that's one of the reasons why I really like his channel, okay? Not only does he break down comic books in a very easy to understand and easy to digest fashion, but he has a very soothing voice. So I listen to his videos a lot, especially when I'm testing out uh, Bluetooth headphones, okay? So shout out to Rob from Comics Explain. Really big YouTuber, really great team. Does some really phenomenal work over there. I'll link up his channel down below in the video description for y'all to check out. Go ahead and head over there if you want to learn something about comic books or if you just need something soothing to listen to while you try and go to sleep, he can help you with that too. All right, let him know E. Drummond sent you. Help your boy out. All right, but... That being said, the overall durability on these 
is just good in my opinion. Because I don't know how long they're going to be able to stand up to my style of heavy use. Guys, now when I take these to the gym, I do not go easy on them at all. Okay? Kind of like when I take Bluetooth earbuds to the gym, do not go easy on them at all. And as I said, I fall asleep listening to audiobooks. I am not a good sleeper. Not at all. Okay? So that's why I kind of turn those two things into tests because that goes directly into the durability category and a lot of Bluetooth headphones that I've tested on the channel have a tendency to break after that style of extended usage. That's why with all of this plastic and the swiveling and folding design, I feel like the durability on these will not hold up to that style of rigorous usage over time. That's why I say the durability on these, in my opinion, is just top notch. Okay? Just letting y'all know my 100% honest and straightforward opinions. That's all I can do. Alright? But that goes over the durability. So, let's keep it moving now. Let's go. Up next now, let's go ahead and talk about the overall charge times and the overall battery life for the headphones. Let's go ahead and get into the manufacturer's estimates first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all my results. I'll throw up everything you need to know in the video and post, so you can check it out, but let's dive into this. So, in terms of the manufacturer's estimates for battery life and charge times, the manufacturer estimated that the headphones will give you uh, 12 hours on a single charge, and they will give you 200 hours of standby. So if you charge up the earbuds and you don't use them regularly, they'll last for 200 hours. If you use them straight through, they'll give you 12 hours on a single charge. But that depends on the volume that you use the headphones at and whether or not you're connecting, up, connecting them up to one or multiple devices at a time and what you're doing with the headphones connected. Okay, so there's a lot of variables that go into that. Now, on the flip side of that token, the manufacturer said that these earbuds take, earbuds, these headphones take approximately two to two and a half hours to reach a full charge, depending on whether or not they're dead or the percentage they're at when you put them on the charger. All right? Now, that's all of the manufacturer's estimates. Okay? Now, let's get into my actual results. Now, my actual testing was done with the headphones at 35% volume and 50% volume, respectfully. And I can actually recommend that you use these headphones at either one of those volumes. Because at 35% volume, it was still easily audible and add nice volume to it. And at 50% volume, it did get a little fuller and sound a little bit better. So, Honestly, at any one of those volumes, it will work just fine, okay? So I can actually recommend 35% volume or 50% volume, and you should have an enjoyable experience. But that is where I tested out these headphones. Now, talking about my results, I averaged between 13 and 14 hours on the single charge with these headphones. Approximately, it was 13 hours and 34 minutes on the low end, and 14 hours and 9 minutes on the high end on a single charge. Alright? Really good overall battery life with these headphones. And 2.5 hours may be long, but the fact that you're getting a good 13 to 14 hours on a single charge, that's still some really good charge times, especially for Bluetooth headphones. So really good overall battery life and really good overall charge times, in my opinion. And I was landing... In terms of the charge times, I was landing at about just over two hours to reach a full charge. About two hours and seven minutes to be exact. Alright? So good stuff there. Good stuff indeed. Now I also want to mention that when the battery is low, you'll get about four to six low battery please charge notifications from the earbuds before they power off. And that's in a span of about 30 seconds to a minute. So you should get ample time to get these earbuds onto 
earbuds, these headphones onto a charger before they die. All right. And that is also accompanied by a very weak red flashing LED. All right. So good stuff there. Good stuff indeed. And I, al I also wanted to mention that when you're charging the headphones, you will see a red accompanying LED. When the headphones are fully charged, that red LED will turn blue. And after a few minutes, it will go off. That will indicate that the headphones are fully charged. All right. Just wanted to throw that out there. I'll throw up pictures and B-roll and post so y'all know exactly how it looks. Okay. So. That goes over the overall charge times and that goes over the overall battery life, okay? Now, that being said, really good overall charge times, really good overall battery life. Let's keep it moving there. Now, I just wanna briefly summarize the positives and the negatives of these headphones. Then we're going to wrap this video up. We're gonna talk about the pricing we're going to talk about current availability. I'm going to give y'all my overall final thoughts and a recommendation or two. All right, so let's summarize these positives really quickly. So starting off at the top, you have a really good build and you have a really good design. Okay. You also have a really solid core feature set on here. Top notch core feature set. You have really good overall sound quality, really good overall volume and really good to top-notch bass, depending on if you use bass boosted mode, okay? Just wanted to throw that one out there. All right, let's keep it moving. Up next, um, you got some really good overall Bluetooth range and strength, okay? Got some eh, good durability. You have really good charge times and really good overall battery life, and these headphones are available at a really phenomenal price. We're going to talk about the price in a little bit here. Okay. Now, talking about the negatives. Okay. The overall comfort level after extended listening sessions definitely needs to be improved. So that's negative number one. It definitely does put a lot of air strain on my ears after extended listening sessions of about four to six hours. So the comfort on these definitely does need some improvement, even though they marketed the fact that they have some really good air cups in their marketing material, definitely needs some improvement still, okay? So comfort needs to be improved, all right? Overall build materials definitely needs to be improved as well. I like to see a little bit more aluminum in the headphones and a little bit less plastic, okay? That being said, a major improvement needs to be made on the overall microphone quality, or i.e. the microphone performance. And please, 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 no micro USB, okay? I can understand and I can even forgive using older Bluetooth to cut down on costs, okay? But no micro USB. It bends easily, it takes longer to charge, no micro USB. Uh, and please, please, no false advertising. You advertise USB, ty USB Type-C, you deliver micro USB, that is false advertising. Boom pods, don't do that, don't do that, okay? It really adds question marks for the customers when you have false advertising. Don't do that, okay? So USB type C, a little bit more aluminum in here. Um, I'm okay with the foldable design, even though I'm not a fan of it. So the foldable uh, swivel design, I'm gonna put that in the negative category because I'm not a fan, but some people might think that's a positive. So, cause it does make it a little bit more portable. Okay. And it lets you adjust it a little bit more for comfort, but I'm not a fan of swiveling or folding for headphones, so it's going in the negative category for me. Other than that, y'all, there isn't really too much, too many negatives to speak of other than that, okay? I have a full list of the positives and a full list of the negatives thrown up in post for y'all to check out, okay? And as always, I am not perfect and I never claim to be, so if y'all pick these up and there's a positive and or a negative that I forgot to mention, 
please leave that feedback down below in the comments. As always, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Keep it respectful, please. Okay? That's the only thing I ask. Keep it respectful, please. Okay? Now, that goes over the positives and the negatives of the headphones. Now let's move on and get into the final section of this video, final category of this video. Let's talk pricing. Let's talk availability. Let's talk final thoughts and overall recommendations. Now, in terms of the pricing, okay, these bad boys I picked up from Amazon on BoomPod's Amazon store page. And after taxes, I paid $32.00. Nine cents. Before taxes, these are going for twenty nine ninety nine, so thirty bucks. After taxes, thirty two oh nine. Okay, thirty two dollars and nine cents. That's how much I paid for them. I have the screenshot of the receipt thrown up in post because y'all know we're all about keeping it straight one hundred around here. That being said, let's see what they're going for right now. So got Amazon pulled up on my phone. And right now, they do have a 10% off coupon at checkout. And as of the recording of this video, it is July 24th. Right? Y'all can see it right there. July 24th. So as of the July 24th, they have a 10% off coupon. I don't know if that coupon is still going to be live when this video goes live for y'all to see it. Okay? But let's see if they have any used ones for sale. So no used ones for sale. And here is the false advertising that I'm talking about. So y'all can clearly see micro USB, right? You can clearly see micro USB. Here on their Amazon page, you can clearly see connector type, USB type C. Okay? Nah. 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 Not there, buddy. Not there. And then if we go further down, that's the only time it mentions that. Then it talks about the battery life, talks about the charge times, but that boom pods is not cool. Or maybe that's a, um, a widget advertisement for another pair of headphones. I'm not sure. But that does say device details. Okay? So that's supposed to be the details for BoomPod's headphones. Not cool. Or maybe I'm reading it wrong. Please fix that. Either Amazon or BoomPod's. That kind of feels like false advertising. It is what it is. But for as of right now, these bad boys are going for $29.99 with a 10% off coupon at checkout. Okay, and again, that is without factoring in shipping and handling and taxes for wherever you're located. And also, that's without factoring in if you're an Amazon Prime customer, which I am. But at that price, $29.99, a little bit over $30 after taxes, can I recommend that y'all pick these up? Well, I would have to say yes, because these are right on par with some other headphones that I've tested. Uh, the headphones that come to mind would have to be have to be the bulk tune second generations. That's right on par with these. So I could recommend these and I could recommend those. So I'll leave links to that video and I'll leave links to those headphones down below in the video description as well. But can I recommend that y'all go out there and pick these headphones up? Yes. As long as y'all can put up with the positives that I'm, the positives. As long as y'all can put up with the negatives that I mentioned, and they're not deal breakers for you, then yes, I can easily recommend that y'all pick these up, because these are some solid performing headphones that really don't break the bank. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what this channel is all about. The best performing devices and products at the cheapest possible prices. So y'all already know. When I came across these, I was going to check these out. But that pretty much does it for this video, guys and gals. 
as always, I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. If you did indeed enjoy the video and or you found it helpful, please help your boy out by giving the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. And make sure you click off the notification bell icon right next to it so you guys and gals get notified when I publish new videos. That being said, if your interest is piqued, all the links to where y'all can pick up these headphones as well as any other recommended headphones in the same pricing uh, tier will be linked up down below in the video description along with all of my other extended coverage for these headphones and the other recommended headphones. So as always, down below in the video description will be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. Also, the affiliated purchasing links will be down there as well. So with those affiliated purchasing links, I do get a small percentage of kickback and no additional cost to you guys and gals. So I consider that to be a win-win for everyone. So as always, if your interest is peaked, down below in the video description will be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. This whole video here today was recorded with a combination of the front and rear facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S7 Active for the uh, Bluetooth earbud button controls category and the rear facing 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. This whole video was recorded in 720p with no external microphone hooked up. So please let me know what you think of the overall video quality as well as what you think of the overall audio quality down below. As I said earlier, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Just keep it respectful, please. All right. Hope everyone is having a good one. Hope everyone is staying safe out there. And I will catch everyone in the next one. We are out of here, everybody. Peace.